we are going to make deviled eggs with bacon. Such a classic, so good. A lot of talk about how to hard boil eggs. So many articles online, do this, do that. Here's my basic rule, and I think you'll find it pretty easy. Start by not burning yourself. Start with some boiling water. I just have boiling water, no salt, no nothing inside. And to it, just add your eggs. I put them in a little spider, a little colander or something, just to drop them down gently into the water. You don't want to drop your eggs all the way into the pot because they can sometimes crack a little bit on impact. So really important to cushion that fall. Eggs are gentle creatures. I'm putting in a dozen eggs. I've got about eh, two and a half, almost three quarts of water. One of the things that affects how well you hard boil eggs is giving them enough water to cook in in the first place. These eggs you see are completely submerged. I'd love to tell you, hey, take a half a cup of water and 20 eggs and go for it. Cover them. Boiling water. I didn't put any salt. Even though an eggshell is a selectively permeable membrane, meaning stuff can get inside, I just don't. Now, we're going to cook these in the boiling water covered for 11 minutes. Do set a timer for stuff like this. It's easy. I used classic, regular, large size supermarket eggs. So we're just going to let those boil away and start on the bacon. This is a topping for the eggs, and it's so good. You can also use the bacon fat, drizzle it on the eggs. So we're going to cook that. I'll get my pan heating. Cast iron skillet for the bacon is the best if you've got one. Now you can cook the bacon whole and cut it up after it's cooked. You can cook the bacon whole and just crumble it up. I've just laid the bacon out flat on a cutting board. This is classic supermarket bacon, right? You can see I'm cutting it just a little kind of like, I don't know, about a half an inch thick slices down the middle. This is a really good moment to have a sharp knife. Make those concise cuts. Now this looks like a lot of bacon, although a lot of bacon somehow always becomes not enough. But once it's cooked, you'll see it's going to be a good amount. We've got 12 eggs that we're deviling. So you're going to get 24 pieces of deviled eggs. You can also just cut this recipe in half if you want. OK. Cutting all that bacon. And you'll see you have meatier parts of the bacon and fatter parts of the bacon. Obviously, cooking all that will even that out. Gather all your bacon together and go right in the skillet. Now, kind of sounds like it doesn't make sense, but I start my bacon in a cast iron skillet with some water. And you're thinking, Alex, aren't we trying to make crispy bacon here? Isn't water the enemy of crispy? And yes, it is. But what the water does is it's almost like when you blanch something to get a crispier skin. Like you've maybe heard that you can take a whole chicken, dunk it in boiling water for one minute, cool it, and then roast it. And you get that crispier skin. The same is true here. We're going to cook this water out that we put in here and watch it then cook down, cook down, and get even crispier and less greasy. So this is my favorite way to cook bacon. You can roast the bacon in the oven on a baking sheet. I like to watch bacon cook. I mean, it's just so beautiful. So we have our eggs boiling. We've got a timer on them for exactly 11 minutes. We've cut our bacon. We've got it cooking nice and easy in a little bit of water cut up in a cast iron skillet. Now let's make the devil part of the deviled egg. We're going to start with just half a cup of mayonnaise. And you know what? I do measure for this. You don't have to. If you're a deviled egg pro, go for it and eyeball it. But for those making deviled eggs for the first, second, fourth, tenth, or twentieth time, try measuring. Half a cup of mayo. I use a dry measure for that. And I may or may not use a little bit more than a generous half a cup of mayo on that. Get that out. That's really the base 
of our deviled egg recipe. But not the kind of cool little ingredient that we're going to add later on. To that, I'm going to add a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I love it. Add that right in. A tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. If you have vegetarians, substitute soy sauce, because Worcestershire has anchovy in it. I like that little anchovy note for umami, but if you want to make them totally vegetarian, sub in the equivalent amount of soy. And I use a low sodium soy for that. Mmm, I love Worcestershire. Takes me straight to a steakhouse. And a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Pretty easy to remember. Tablespoon of mustard, tablespoon of vinegar, half a cup of mayo, and a tablespoon of Worcestershire. Now, a little heat, but not so much that it's spicy, more like a little lifting of the other flavors. Sometimes you can use a hot sauce or a chili or a spice just to kind of elevate the flavors and not to create something super spicy. So to that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of Tabasco or hot sauce. Let's whisk all that up. Okay. Some lemon juice. I feel like we're always adding zest and juice. In this case, I'm gonna cheat and I'm not gonna add the zest. There's just no place for lemon zest in deviled eggs. I'm sorry. That's just too fancy for me. Squeeze the juice right in there. Notice how I'm holding the lemon. Squeeze it right over. And if you hold it straight like this, all the pits congregate up there, but they generally won't fall in there. Whisk that in. Now you'll notice your mixture is pretty liquidy. You're gonna think, uh-oh, is this gonna work? Well, look at it this way. Even if it doesn't, we can always add a little bit of mayonnaise to thicken that up. I know we said cover these and boil them for 11 minutes, but let's face it, whenever you're cooking something with a cover on it, even if you're not supposed to, you do peak. So let's have a peak. You can see that they're simmering, they look good. If the water is really bubbling high or the eggs are starting to crack, just lower that heat a little bit, which I'm gonna do right now. Bacon is simmering away. Give that a little stir every now and again. I use a rubber spatula with things like this because I don't want to scrape my cast iron skillet, right? I just use a heat proof rubber spatula. Just make sure the bacon's not sticking anywhere. Make sure that water's cooking out. Smells so good. Okay. So the last thing we add to this mixture, just to start and build the foundation, is half a teaspoon of paprika, which I put in a little tea strainer. Why? Alex, why? Well, I could just dump the paprika in here, but then it falls in a clump in only one space. If you just use a little strainer, you're getting that paprika already mixed in there. It's the same as sifting flour when you bake a cake, right? Look at that. Mix that in. If you like your deviled eggs a little less spicy, skip the paprika and just add a little bit of Tabasco. If you like them spicier, add a little more of both. Okay. So that's our deviled egg base. And now for that little secret thing. I feel like everybody has that secret to great deviled eggs. Mine is a little bit of heavy cream. So get some cream. Regular old classic heavy whipping cream. I do measure a third of a cup. Right in the bowl. You can use a mixer. If you don't have a mixer and you have an attitude problem and your cream is cold, you can even put your bowl in the fridge. You can just hand whip this because it's such a small amount. Kind of like working for my deviled egg, a little workout. Just whisk this. We're going to make this nice and fluffy, almost stiff peaks. We're not going to add anything in here like sugar or anything. We're not making dessert. You can add a little bit of salt or pepper to the cream if you want, or just leave it as is. Mm. 
Look at that. Whips up so nice. You too can be an iron chef in your own kitchen and just whip up some cream. Okay, that's beautiful. What else do we need? One last thing we need to really be ready to make these deviled eggs is just to cut some scallions. And this is really for garnish. You only need like two, three scallions maybe. Cut the tips off. Just those very end bits we don't want to eat. And just mince. And we're gonna go all the way up the scallion. We're gonna use all of it. The white is nice because it's very kind of oniony and strong. And then as we get up to the green part of the scallion, it's the more delicate onion flavor. And we want both. You can also just divide up your scallion and decide how much you want to use. You can separate the green and white parts. If you like that stronger onion note and it's not date night, go for it. If you like that more delicate green note, and there's the eggs. I never feel ready when a timer goes off. Okay, let's look at these babies. Beautiful, nice and easy. I just take them out with a slotted spoon, slotted spatula, handle with care. If you cool your eggs before you peel them, they will definitely come out of their shell more easily. That's something people ask me about a lot. What can I do to get my eggs perfectly peeled and out of the shell? One thing is cooking them in enough water. Another thing is starting your eggs in boiling water. That actually increases the chances of beautiful intact whites. And then another thing is cooling them. You can use an ice bath. I pretend I use an ice bath when I'm being chefy. But the truth is I just pop them in the sink and run some cold water over them. It's probably because that's the way my parents did it when I was a kid. So just run cold water over the eggs. Okay, we'll let them sit for a minute. Let's come back to our bacon for a second. Notice how all that water cooked out and you're getting those telltale sounds of bacon crisping up in the skillet, see that? Ooh. I could forget the deviled egg and just crack an egg in here. Just keep stirring the bacon so it's getting thoroughly coated with the grease and it's in a single even layer in your skillet so it's browning all beautifully. So our eggs are cooling for a minute. I'm just gonna finish these scallions. This is a dish where you'll wanna just kind of get everything together and then just assemble. You can prep all of this, make the yolk mix, get the whites on a serving platter, everything else, and then when you're ready to serve, just put it together. So you have two parts of the scallion to consider, depending on the taste you like. Again, that white part of the scallion is really strong. You know, like that friend who talks just a little bit too much at a party, and then the, the green part, that more delicate friend with some finesse. I kind of like to think I might be both. Okay, so there comes to a point in every recipe where you kind of need to clear the decks and get ready to finish the dish. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. All right, we've got our scallions. Again, separate the white and the green part. You can gauge the intensity of your scallionedness. You can also just not use them. The only other substitute, if you don't like scallions, I would say, are chives, because they're kind of a scallion's mellower cousin, or you could use parsley if you don't like that oniony bit, or you can't eat them. Okay, green and white scallions, that goes over here for now. The bacon, I kind of turned it down for that last minute or two. You can see now, we've got that beautiful crispy bacon. It'll almost feel as if it's not completely crispy towards the end. You don't want to overcook bacon. You can overcook bacon. And you bite it and it's super tough and chewy. So I generally try to stop when I think the bacon is still a little bit soft, but golden brown all the same. Look at that. I just can't. Drain that on a paper towel or a kitchen towel. Spread it out. 
as the bacon cools, it'll get crispier. If you want to be really naughty, you can also double the bacon and serve it. The eggs nestled in a bed of the crispy bacon. That's only if you're being really bad. So let's look at that. Once out of the grease, you can see it's going to crisp up a little bit as it cools. So I'll spread that out, leave that ready. Very hard not to eat that. Very hard not to eat at least half of that. Shut the heat off. Let your grease cool in the skillet and then save it. Because that's really good for cooking. Things like cornbread or pretty much anything or a mud mask if you're feeling risky. Now the eggs. Just drain that cool water off the eggs. How to peel an egg. What I do is I just kind of crack all around it and on the top or the bottom. Try to make sure I have several points of entry. And then I just start peeling. As you're peeling the eggs, you may find that sometimes they stick, the whites. It just happens. Ironically, you think that a fresh egg would be the most cooperative, but generally the fresher the egg, the harder time you'll have detaching the shell from the white. So while it's irritating to peel a super fresh egg, it's also a good sign. Now, as you're peeling them, you get those little bits of shell, right? See those little bits? If you do, just I keep a little bowl of cool water, and I just give the egg a little rinse, just to make sure there are no bits of shell. It's amazing how one tiny bit of shell can take all the devil out of the egg, you know what I mean? Peel down the middle. I like to go up and down kind of the length of the egg. I find it easier to peel that way. Do my little, my little dunk. See that? And one egg will vary from the other. I'm going to peel the rest of these eggs. Push pause and come back to me when you're done peeling your eggs. Here are our eggs. You see how some of them just didn't come out perfectly. But wait till people eat them. No one's going to say, hey, that egg had a little jagged edge on it. All right. Clear your board. Clear any excess moisture. I like this little tray for presentation. The moment of truth, cutting the eggs in half. <sighs> I'm nervous. It's our first time together. Now, cut the egg in half. Pretty good. We did a good job. Every time you cut an egg, wipe the blade so that you don't get a lot of yolk traces in your whites. Simple little step makes a big difference for neat deviled eggs. Cut them all in half. So great when they come out like this. You'll notice some of them may be a little bit medium rare or rare in the center. Not to worry. Especially when you're mixing a dozen eggs, it's OK if they're not all exactly the same. Look at this. It's these little steps that really make a difference. OK, so once all the eggs are cut, Right? Here's where we separate the big dogs from the little dogs. We're going to take those yolks and separate them from the whites. I'm going to put a little strainer over these and just pop the yolks gently out. It's OK if there's a little bit of residual yolk inside the egg white. It's normal. And honestly, if you can do these kind of fresh and serve them fresh, oh boy, so good. And this is our filling that we're making at the same time. Again, be gentle. Just 
gently separate the yolk. Again, see how there's a little bit of yolk in there? It's okay. The egg police are not going to come and arrest you. This is a good time to do a little bit of editing and make sure there's no shell bits on your yolks or your whites. This is the last time you're going to see these egg whites before they go into someone's mouth. So it's probably going to be your mouth too, right? It's, you can also arrange these eggs, again, on a platter of little crispy bacon bits. You can put them on a little bit of parsley or fresh scallions, like a little nest. There are a lot of really cool ways to present this if you don't have a fancy pants egg dish. Okay. Now we're gonna finish our filling. So I have the yolks in a little strainer over a bowl. Take the back of a spoon or even a spatula and just push them through the strainer. You can do this with a sieve or whatever else. Any fine mesh that will essentially strain the yolks. And we're doing this because then we won't get that kind of lumpy deviled egg. You know that kind of clump factor when you bite into the egg and you get that, that bit of yolk. This is like sieving them. You can use a bigger spoon if you like. I just like managing with a smaller spoon. See how they're coming out? Fluffy, no lumps, smells so good. Move the eggs a lot in the strainer. So you're taking advantage of a lot of the strainer's real estate. It'll get more of the eggs through the strainer faster. If you get to the bottom and there's some bits that are really resisting going through, don't fight it. That's what the straining process is for. You see that's just not going through? I'll leave it. But we don't want to waste any of the egg that's on the exterior. Okay. Ready? Remember our egg mix we made with the mayonnaise and everything else? Add those sieved yolks right in there and just mix. Ooh -hoo -hoo. It's making me hungry. Now, if it's liquidy, you can pop this into the fridge even just five, 10 minutes and let it firm up a little bit as it chills. That's the best way if your yolk mix is a little liquidy. And now to that, I'm gonna add that one third cup of whipped cream that we whipped earlier. That's our little secret fluff factor. Just gently fold that in. You can over mix anything you cook. So no need to get all excited and over mix. Just get that cream in there and you'll see it get a little fluffier and lighter. It's actually nicer than mayonnaise in that way. Now at this point, we're gonna plate up our eggs and you wanna taste that yolk mix just to make sure it's where you wanna be. The vinegar's good. Tiny pinch salt, I feel. So I've made this whole recipe with kosher salt. For finishing the eggs, I like a little coarse sea salt. I know you've got some sea salt you bought on a cruise ship and you don't know what to do with it. It's been sitting in the back of your spice cabinet. Now's the time to bust it out. Some coarse sea salt, we'll use that. We've got our bacon and our scallions. We're really all ready to go. I feel like this is a dish with a lot of payoff. I've got a star tip here. You could use a smooth tip. And if you don't have pastry chips, no tip at all is fine. Take a bag, cut yourself a little corner. I often cut too big a corner and the tip slides right through the bag. Fit the pastry tip in there and then fold the bag open. So you've got a whole lip of the bag that isn't gonna get coated with the eggs, see that? You can kind of hook it over your hand. See that? And now, spoon 
the yolk mix in there. Notice how I'm going deep into the bag and I use my thumb to kind of wipe the spatula off. So I'm filling the bag and I'm using my thumb almost like an edge, like the edge of a bowl. Go ahead and put all the yolk mixture in there. We don't want to come back here. And again, your egg mix will film, firm up even more if you just chill it a little bit. So if at any point it feels a little liquidy or soft, pop it in the fridge for a few minutes and let it chill. Okay. We're all ready with our pastry bag and now we just gently put it down on the board and fold that back up closed. And just let that hang out here for a second while we deal with our whites. I feel like we neglect this part of the egg when we devil it. This yolk is all, it's like a sports car. And this is like a worn out minivan. We gotta give this some flavor of its own before we start. So I'll take a little bit of that coarse salt I mentioned and just sprinkle it over the whites. We have some of those scallions here. This might be where I'd use a little bit of the white part of the scallion. It's kind of nice when you put all these things into the white before you add the yolk mix. It's pretty. Scallion also gives it really nice texture. Gives it that little, it's almost crispy here. Okay. Tiny, tiny bit of pepper, just a little bit. If you want that tingle and heat, again, just a tiny bit of paprika. And then just gently dust your eggs. Not too much. Now the white can kind of keep up with the yolk, you know? It's not such an uneven race. The moment of truth. Take your yolk mix, start filling those eggs. Don't overdo it. You'd be surprised how nice it is when the ratio of white and yolk actually match each other almost. I must admit, I like the, the fluted tip if you have one. It's a great thing. If not, no biggie. Just cut a corner on your plastic bag and put the yolk right in. Isn't it nice to know that we have that little built-in flavor insurance policy of the seasoned egg white that's got the scallion, that paprika, a little bit of pepper and salt. Again, if you don't like your deviled eggs too spicy, skip the paprika crop dust. Go back and hit a few. I don't like to waste any of the yolk mix. And I kind of like when they all look a little different from one another. Oh yeah. They're also more vibrant when the whites are seasoned because they have color and vibrancy too. Now we're doing the green part of the scallion, just a little bit. I kind of like letting all of this seasoning fall around the eggs on the platter. It gives it a natural look. If you don't like that, plate your eggs, finish them all up on the cutting board, and then put them on a platter all nice and neat and fancy. We're not too fancy around here, but taste. We're crushing it. Finally, a seasoned egg white. I've made just the deviled egg whites, by the way. So good. Just devil those whites and eat them. If you've got friends with cholesterol issues, give them the platter of deviled whites and give your other friends the platter of deviled eggs. Okay, some scallion, and let's not forget our bacon. You see how that crisped up so beautifully, just cooling a little bit? It's amazing what just letting something cool for a couple minutes will do. I try to drop the bacon actually more on the white than on the yolk, because the white really needs it, you know? And the texture of the scallions of that crispy bacon is so great to break up 
just that soft egg. Oh yeah. Now I have been known to just put the rest, if there's any leftover bacon, I know it's kind of weird, leftover and bacon in the same sentence, but if there is, you can put a little bit more on it or even more on the platter around it and fill it in. I put out a platter like this, comes back clean. You never knew there was anything extra. Now, if you're serving this as an hors d'oeuvre, this is fantastic like this, you could also plate a few and serve them as an appetizer. So if I did that, I might just take a little bit of scallion and bacon and make a little nest, right? And you could just put one of these eggs right in there, stop it. Looks like the egg in its natural bacon habitat. Two ways, you're an artist. We crushed it. Truth is though, how does it taste, right? I mean, Alex, let's get with it. Mmm. Mmm. This is really deviled. It's not super spicy, but you get that tingle in the heat from the hot sauce and from the paprika. I love the scallion in there. You really need the scallion. Um, and of course the bacon, always welcome at my table. Um, deviled eggs, platter, individually portioned. Maybe we make this whole platter and we actually don't share it. You just eat the whole thing in the kitchen and tell people to order takeout. 